Sam from West Coast Polishing here to give you some uh, demos and some uh, tutorials on how to polish. We're gonna we're gonna work on this rim right here. Uh, you can see it's in bad shape. Uh, it's gonna give you a few pointers on the type of wheels and the type of rouge and some of the techniques we're gonna be using to uh, get this thing polished up for you. And a lot of you have questions on how to, what do you use. Uh, one thing about the polishing spectrum, there's a whole bunch of variables that you can use. There's so many techniques, there's so many uh, rouges and compounds, different types of wheels, different resins and hardness of wheels, machines and equipment. So there's a lot of variables. One thing about it, once you find your niche and you find out what works for you based on the type of industry you're in or polishing, you'll, 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 you'll find your niche and you'll find what works for you. It's like riding a bike. Once you know how to do it, it's duck suit. So. For this, for this tutorial, we're using a Makita GA7911 6000 RPM. We got the heavy duty flanges. We're gonna be using a yellow wheel. Like that. We're gonna be using the yellow wheel. It's an airway. And the reason why it's, we're using the airways is it keeps the metal cool. You get less flash points, less melted residue, less combustion. And your, your, your work surface comes out, your finished product comes out a lot better. We'll be using a respirator, but I can't talk what's going on for this tutorial, so I'm just going to use this. Okay, we got, we got, we got different, uh, we got a different assortment, you can come in close to that. We got different assortments of compounds, like I told you, different wheels. Um, this right here, we have the brown, which is the Tripoli. It's a good cut in color. It's a semi-cut and semi-finish. Here we got the green. It's a, it's a, it's got an aluminum oxide on it. It's a little less greasy, has less binders. This has more binders. This is good for more finishing to, uh, and, and some cutting. Then you got the white. It's more drier, no binders, lower cut, better finishing capabilities. Then you got the white wheel. The resin's white, it's light. It's, not, it's less dense, it's for finishing. And you got the orange wheel, which has a harder resin, of course, for more finishing. And then you got what we like to call our universal, our yellow. This is what we do a majority of our work with. As you look at our website, westcoastpolishing.com, you'll see we're mainly using the yellow wheels, but we use also an assortment of other uh, wheels, compounds, and techniques, as you'll see. So, we are going to use our brown we are going to load the wheel. Be careful. This is 6,000 RPMs. You got me in here? Yes. Perfect. Now notice my technique. I'm doing little increments, little intervals, about an inch and a half to two inch square inches. You do one little area at a time. You cross cut from different directions. You can see right here, as opposed to right here, this is where we got a good cut right here. Again, just using little increments going back and forth. this rim up we're, we're gonna finish cutting it up with the with the brown tripolio it's got the silicone oxides in it uh, this is the initial cut we could have went a different route got a more aggressive wheel or a more aggressive compound but for the sake of this tutorial want to keep it basic and understandable uh
Now when you're polishing and you got a job like this, you want to load it frequently because the minute you put that on, you got 6,000 RPMs. It doesn't take long for you to use up your cutting capabilities. That's what keeps the, that's what keeps your work pros, progressing is, is the ability for the wheel to cut. You got to load it frequently. and all the residue that embeds itself down into the aluminum. And if you really want to get a great finish, you really want to practice some sort of, of uh, intermediate techniques to clean your work. Because if I leave the polish on there, the rouge, the brown rouge on there, and I go to finish it, it's going to have a burning rubber effect with the finishing compound, and you'll have holographic marks inside your work, and you don't want that. Again, this is a learning process. So, you know, as the more you do, the more you're going to learn. You just got to find your niche and find your technique. So what we're going to do, as remember, we uh, use the yellow wheel, which is the more aggressive, more harder uh, wheel. We're going to switch it to a white, white one. It's a finishing wheel. It's white because it has less resins, less hardness, less density. We're still using the airways because the airways keep the, keep the surface cool if at all possible, so that you have less flash points. Flash points, remember, is when your material becomes so hot, your compounds and your material become so hot, it, it melts and embeds itself on the inside the pores of your work. We want to eliminate that, if all possible. Make sure that's on and secure. And we're gonna to go to our green, our aluminum oxide, our, our, our aluminum oxide. Remember, we gotta load our wheel. Now when we're doing the finishing technique, and there's all kinds of levels of finishing. For this tutorial, this is gonna be a two-step process, a cut and then a finish. Um, you'll notice we move a little faster. We're not doing the small increments. We're doing a broader left to right uh, path. So, and you'll find your niche as you get to practice on that.
Now remember, this is a 6,000 RPM machine. It's a 15 amp, very powerful. You really gotta hold it tight. If you're not comfortable with the 6,000 RPM, you could also start with the with a lesser machine, a variable speed machine, something that has uh, a lower RPM capability, like 2,300 or 2,800 or 3,000 RPMs. It allows you uh, a better learning curve without having to worry about how you're going to handle this or keeping control of this. But if you're confident, well, this is the way to go because it, it really just the exact thing. Okay, we finished uh, doing the finish on the uh, wheel. We did the cut, then we did the strip down with, with the aluminum brightener mixture to get all the contaminants that are embedded in the pores of the aluminum. Then we did the finish. Uh, when well, we did the cut with the brown, then we did the finish with the green and the white wheel. Now we're gonna clean it because we left a lot of rouge everywhere. It's just, it's just the nature of the beast. That's just part of the process. You're gonna find it. The best thing to clean it with we found is it's mineral spirits. Uh, you can pick it up at Home Depot. This is a this is a green product, so it's really good. Uh, it's not so harsh. But anyway, you can spray it on. But for this tutorial, I'm just gonna dab it on. And make sure you're using microfiber towels. Make sure you're using a clean one to take it off because you don't want to just be moving dirt and compound around. You want to actually pick it up. So I'm just gonna put this on here. You can spray it on. Or you can wipe it off. Uh, either way, uh, I don't have a spray bottle with me right now, so I'm just gonna see how that's taking that all up. It's just picking up all the dirt and the compounds that we put on there. And some of the stuff where the edges are at, you're gonna have to just scrub a little harder. This stuff has a well. This this work had a lot of uh, contours and holes and all that good stuff. So that's just that, that, that's just again the nature of the beast. If it was solid, it'd be a lot smoother, but. This video. So I'm gonna pour some more on here again. You see, I got all this dirt in this area. I want to apply the mineral spirits in a clean area. You see, I got black right here. And it's on just, I want to uh, be able to get all the black off. It does a really wonderful job. You don't want to have to press too hard, so make sure you use plenty of uh, mineral spirits and also a clean towel. Because if you if you press hard, you're gonna you're gonna drag the compound on your finish, and you don't want to do that. Especially when you work this hard to get this finish. So I've applied mineral spirits all on the face of the star. Now I'm going to use a fresh microfiber towel to get it off. Now I'm going to use it in sections so I get the most out of my rag. So you can see how that just comes. And the good thing about mineral spirits, it doesn't leave a residue. That's why we use it. It evaporates fairly clean. And as you can see, and just, just a couple of black spots like I missed, but you could all, you could figure those off. See that? Okay. And then a couple of marks right there. All right. Okay. That's good. Cool. All right, YouTube fans. That about concludes this tutorial. How to polish a wheel with some of the. Some of the products that we have over here um, and just some of the general knowledge and techniques um, as always polishing is just like riding a bike you know it's kind of difficult because you don't know the proper techniques the proper procedures what equipment to use what materials to use and how to use it um, but that's what we're here for and i hope this tutorial has helped you to get a better understanding on how to polish 
using uh, using some of the equipment and materials that we offer here. Uh, all the uh, materials and all the products and equipment that we use on this tutorial and our others, you can you can purchase at westcoastpolishing.com. Of course, um, we offer full support uh, for the lifetime as long as you, uh, for the lifetime of uh, you know as long as we're here. We offer that uh, to our customers and to our viewers. And even if you don't purchase from us, feel free to give us a call or hit us up on YouTube, leave your comments and we'll, we'll respond or hit us up on Facebook, however it's convenient for you. And we'll be more than help you to be happy to help you along uh, so that you could uh, become uh, an expert in polish like control. Uh, this is Sam from West Coast Polishing. Uh, thank you.